So today we're going to talk about section 8.5, which is all about dot products. Uh, we're going to start off by just defining what a dot product is and showing how to uh, calculate it in a couple different ways. Uh, talk about how it relates to angles. And then start talking about some very, uh, ge very geometric perspective of what a dot product can do, which is uh, known as a vector projection. Uh, we'll talk about it more when we get there. And then, of course, we're going to close this off by doing a few more um, applications. Now, I want to emphasize again that the dot product as part of uh, working with vectors is really this idea that we're just introducing you to you at this point. Um, I said earlier that vectors uh, were used a lot in physics and engineering applications, <coughs> as well as uh, a number of different applications of an area known as linear algebra. Uh, we're not going to be able to touch all those things in this class, but uh, it is helpful to be exposed to it. So, so the dot product is one of the main, uh, main tools that we use in a lot of those situations to uh, learn different things about what we're studying. So what is a dot product? A dot product is a special type of calculation that we can apply to vectors. And in a lot of ways, it works kind of like multiplication uh, when it comes down to the algebra of it. Um, and it has a lot of generalizations that we could talk about if we were in another class. But since we're focusing on two-dimensional vectors, we're only going to define it in terms of uh, the two-dimensional vectors that we have that we're using. So. Uh, there are two different definitions we have. We have one definition based on the components, component definition. And so we have the vector a dot b, and this is just a dot between them. Uh, is if we have a1 comma a2 is the vector a dot b1 comma b2, the dot product is going to be a1 b1 plus a2 b2. Now we also have a geometric definition. And the geometric definition, if you have two vectors, A and B, then A dot B is equal to the length of A times the length of B times cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between them. And theta will always be between 0 and pi, or between 0 degrees and 180 degrees. <clears throat> so theta is the angle between the vectors. Now it's important when we say the angle between the vectors, we are saying that we are looking at the angle when we draw the tails together. Uh, because if we were to draw the tail uh, attached to the head, we'll end up with different angles involved. So we really want to have the two tails together. And that's very important when we talk about the geometric definition. Now, if you take a look at these two formulas, uh, you can see that they don't really look that similar to each other. And so it sort of leads us to ask the question, well, how, do, how are these two things the same? It turns out that we can show that these two things are the same using uh, polar coordinates. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually work through that derivation. So the one that we're going to take as our basic definition is this one right here, the component definition. And we're going to figure out how we can take this definition and derive this formula from the geometric perspective. And so the first thing we have to do is we have to think about our vectors. We have a vector a and a vector b. A vector a is a1, comma a2, and a vector b is b1, comma b2. Well, how can we use polar coordinates to talk about these things? Well, we know that if we were to have the vectors drawn in standard position, uh, we'll call this angle alpha. So here's the vector a, that the vector would be then the length of a times cosine of alpha times the length of a sine of alpha. Similarly for b and beta, we have some other angle here call that one beta, and that's for the uh, vector b, then this would be length of b cosine beta, length of b sine of beta. <clears throat> now, where does the angle theta come from? Theta comes from the angles between these two vectors. And so if we have, alpha, if we have this vector a here and this vector b here, the angle in between them, which we call theta, if you think about it in standard position, here's your alpha and here's your beta. 
we get theta is equal to beta minus alpha. Now I'm drawing it specifically here so that beta is the bigger angle compared to alpha. It turns out it doesn't even matter. Uh, we're just going to stick with this uh, no notational convention here. And so now if we do the calculation, a dot b, according to the uh, component definition, this is going to be, uh, length of a cosine alpha times length of b cosine beta plus length of a sine alpha length of b sine beta. You take a look at these two terms, they both have a length of a times the length of b in it, which is great. We have cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. Now you might recognize this combination of terms. This combination of terms is in fact uh, the difference of angles formula for cosine. This is cosine of beta minus alpha. And beta minus alpha is theta, so this is length of A times length of B times the cosine of theta. And that's exactly what we have here. A dot B is equal to length of A times length of B times cosine theta. So let's look at a couple quick examples of this. Example, find the dot product 3, negative 2, dot, 5, 1. Okay, well, this is just an application of a formula. Here's our vector A, here's our vector B. Here's A1, comma, A2. That's B1 and B2. And the formula for this is A1, B1, plus A2, B2. And so, 3 times 5 plus negative 2 times 1. Watch a negative sign. This is equal to 15 minus 2, which is 13. Now, this specific moment, we don't have an interpretation of what this number 13 means. We just know that this is the result that we get from plugging things into the formula. Find the dot product of the two vectors shown. Okay, well, so here we've been given the problem in terms of a geometric presentation, and so we have to use the geometric formula for the dot product. A dot B is equal to the length of A times the length of B times the cosine of the angle between them. Now here's where you just have to be careful. Don't take a look at the number 30 degrees and plug that in as if that is the thing that you're supposed to plug in. Theta is the angle between these two vectors. And so we actually have to figure out what that angle is. Well, if this is straight here, that's 180 degrees and we have to subtract off 30, gives you 150 degrees. Uh, doesn't matter which one we label which, we'll call this one here A and that one B. <clears throat> So the length of A is 7 times 6, length of B, times cosine of 150 degrees, uh, 42 times cosine of 150 degrees, okay, 150 degrees, so we have a 30 degree reference angle, uh, cosine is negative in the second quadrant, and so with the reference angle of 30 degrees, the cosine value is root 3 over 2, so this is a negative square root of 3 over 2, so this is negative 21 square root of 3. <clears throat> Now this diagram as it's drawn is hinting at a physics problem where this is some sort of object and the force is being applied this way and that way. Uh, those extra details don't actually matter for answering the question of what is the dot product. And again, we don't yet have an interpretation of what this value means, this negative 21 square root of 3. It doesn't mean anything yet, but that's okay. When we get to applications, we'll talk about the meaning and the interpretation of the dot product.